Good afternoon, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. This is Rich again, back for your second video blog of the day for Saturday, January 2nd, 2016, around 4.46 in the afternoon in Berwick, Massachusetts. It's the sun's going down. We had great sunshine today average temperatures but felt a little chilly because of the wind. Tomorrow's going to be a little warmer in the uh, in the low to mid 40s get more of the snow melted but then the freeze comes Monday and Tuesday below freezing the entire day and stuff so the snow won't melt and what's left over will be turning to ice but a warm-up's coming up and next Saturday or Sunday we could have rain or snow some news to report longtime NBA referee Joey Crawford's retiring at the end of the NBA season. The USA's men's junior hockey team shut out the Czech Republic by a score of 7 to nothing today at the World Junior Championships. And the first four NHL All Stars been voted in, and these are the captains. The captain for the Pacific um, Division is John Scott of the Arizona Coyotes. The captain of the Central Division is Patrick Kane of the Chicago Blackhawks. The captain of the Metropolitan Division is Alex Ovechkin. And captain of the, of the um, Atlantic Division is Yamia Yaga. And these players will be playing in the 2016 All-Star Game in Nashville, Tennessee. The other 40 will be named this Wednesday. And I bet Patrice Bergeron makes the all-star team from the Bruins. He might be the only one. That's about it on the news. My second video blog subject of the day is about one of the most famous professional wrestling feuds of all time. It is between the Nature Boy, Ric Flair, 16-time world champion, woo, and the Macho Man, Randy Savage. Ooh, yeah, dig it. This feud covered the WWE and WCW, and they feuded with each other approximately four years. The WWE version of the Savage Flair feud started at WrestleMania 8. Well, actually, it started several weeks prior. Um, Ric Flair was the I was going to face off against Macho Man Randy Savage in the main one of the cold main events at WrestleMania 8. But several weeks prior, like Ric Flair and Mr. Perfect were doing promos that that Ric Flair said he had a affair with Elizabeth, and Ric Flair says she was mine before yours. And all of these pictures show Ric Flair and Miss Elizabeth together in so many pictures and stuff like that. But Randy Savage said it wasn't true and stuff. Eventually they did an interview with Miss Elizabeth and Miss Elizabeth said that photos were doctored and it was actually Randy Macho Man Savage in those photos and stuff. And then at WrestleMania 8 it was one of the co-main events, Ric Flair defending the WWE Championship against the Macho Man Randy Savage. This match happened at Indianapolis, Indiana. It was a and they, and, the, and Ric Flair and Mr. Perfect were teasing about showing a centerfold of Miss Elizabeth. You know, it, probably they were saying it was a nude centerfold, and it was on pay per view. But they when WWE would not be showing a new photo. They would probably be kicked off the pay-per-view for good if that happened. It was just a bait-and-switch approach. And the Macho Man Randy Savage versus Nasa Boy Ric Flair much at WrestleMania 8 was very, very good. Dragging stuff. Halfway through, Miss Elizabeth came down and she got into Ric Flair's face and they had several of the agents and the suits and the producers. And one of them was um, a young Shane McMahon. And Macho Man Randy Savage um, helped, rolled up Ric Flair with a handful of tights for the one, two, three. And Macho Man Randy Savage becomes the WWE Champion for the second time afterwards. Ric Flair kisses Miss Elizabeth and Miss Elizabeth slaps Ric Flair. And afterwards, Ric Flair and Randy Macho Man Savage have a, a several month house show feud all over the WWE circuit. But this house show feud was awful 
attendance-wise, and eventually they had Ric Flair and some other wrestlers teaming up with each other to face um, Randy Savage and several other wrestlers. And, and there was a rumor in SummerSlam 1992, if the, if the, if the SummerSlam was going to be at Washington, D.C. at the Capitol Center. It was going to be Ric Flair against Randy Savage in a retirement match. This is when the room was going around that Ric Flair was unhappy with WWE and wanted to go back to WCW. But, um, West, I mean, SummerSlam 1992 happened in, um, in London, England and at Wembley Stadium. And they changed it to Randy Macho Man Savage defending the WWE title against the Ultimate Warrior and Ric Flair's executive um, executive consultant Mr. Perfect was like like causing tension be between the Warrior and Macho Man Randy Savage and stuff and also Flair and then they did an interview where like Ric Flair was saying to the Ultimate Warrior that Randy Macho Man Savage was going to have Mr. Perfect Services as a manager at SummerSlam 1992. It happened on like an interview on WWE Superstars. Um, one week in August of 1992, the next week they have an interview with Randy Macho Man Savage and they had Mr. Perfect come out and said that the Ultimate Warrior was negotiating with him to be in his corner. And then they have, they do more and more like um, promos and stuff, and Ric Flair was involved saying, I'll be in at SummerSlam 1992. At Wembley Stadium, Flair did not have a match at SummerSlam 1992. There was a, and the rumor going around that the Ultimate Warrior was going to turn heel and win the WWE Championship with help from Ric Flair and Mr. Perfect, but Warrior turned down that idea at the last minute. And SummerSlam 1992, the main event, one of the co-main events was the Ultimate Warrior against Randy Macho Man Savage. And Ric Flair and Mr. Perfect interfered in the match, beating up both wrestlers. The Warrior wins by count out, but the title cannot change hands on a count out. And three nights later, at a TV taping at Hershey Park, Pennsylvania, Ric Flair faced off against Randy Macho Man Savage for the WWE title and the match was so awful halfway through the match Bobby the Brain Heenan told um, Miss, um, Flair and Savage to cut it because Vince McMahon was very pissed how that match was going and they had to restart the match later on in the TV tape end and Ric Flair beats Randy Macho Man Savage with help from Razor Ramon to win the WWE Championship for the second time, but a few months, a few weeks later, um, Ric Flair drops the WWE title to Bret the Hitman Hart. Flair and Savage do continue their feud and a tag team. SummerSlam, I mean Survivor Series 1992. Um, Ric Flair and Razor Ramon were supposed to face off against the Ultimate Maniacs. Flair, I mean Savage and Warrior, but Warrior flunked the drug test. So he was fired by WWE, and Macho Man Randy Savage convinced Mr. Perfect, who was the finance, um, the executive consultant, to um, Ric Flair to be his partner at Survivor Series 92. Mr. Perfect agreed. He turned on Heenan and Flair, and then they had a match at Survivor Series 92, Flair and Ramon against Perfect and Macho Man, which was a decent match. Afterwards, the Flair Savage feud in WWE was over because Flair went back to um, WCW in January and Macho Man settled into as well as commentator on Monday Night Raw. A few years later, Macho Man Randy Savage jumps to WCW and this feud gets re 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 regenerated on Slamberly 1995. They started with promos where Macho Man Randy Savage's father, Angelo Poffo, said he was worried about um, Randy Savage and Hulk Hogan facing off against Vader and Ric Flair at the main event for Slamberly 1995. And then at Slamberly 95, um, Hogan and Wall 
Hogan and Fla and Hogan and Savage beat Flair and Vader, but afterwards, um, Flair and Arn Anderson and Vader were beating up on the Macho Man and stuff, and and Angelo Poffo was 70 years old at the time inducted into the w um, WCW Hall of Fame he hardly had a Hall of Fame career but it was just a f just Macho Man wanted him to be inducted as a favor and stuff because if that ha didn't happen Macho Man probably would leave WCW <laughs> and then like my and Angelo Poffo was going to try to rescue his son Randy but Flair and Anderson and Vader beat up on 70-year-old Angel Poffel, a disgusting and stuff. And it starts a main event at Great American Bash 1995 with Macho Man Randy Savage against um, Nature Boy Ric Flair. Nature Boy Ric Flair wins this match using a cane, Angelo Poffel, because he was in Macho Man's corner. And this feud continues on to um, Bash at the Beach 1995, where, like, it was a lifeguard match. They had wrestlers as lifeguards come in, and it was Flair and Savage again. Um, Savages wins it, and for a few months, this feud kind of dies down, but comes back at at um, so Stockade 1995 where there was a triple threat match between Ric Flair, Steen, and Lex Luger to face off against Randy Savage for the WCW world title at the main event. Flair wins that match and then Flair faces off against Randy Savage. They have a hard fought match but the four horsemen interfere. Flair beats Savage to win the WCW World Title, and it was his um, 12th, 13th World Title. But you know, it continues on. A few weeks later, they have several great matches and promos were aw awesome. On on Monday Night Troll, January 22nd, 1996, um, Flair lost the WCW World Title back to Andy Savage because of woman interfering and stuff. And f next night, f um, f Macho Man Randy Savage and Hulk Hogan reintroduced Miss Elizabeth. And they had a rematch at Slamboree, I mean, f Super Bowl 1996 was Ric Flair with woman woman turned on Savage eventually facing off against Randy Savage and Miss Elizabeth for the WCW world title in a steel cage and this was a great steel cage match um, Randy Savage survived the high heel sh um, shoe sh um, shot by Ric Flair but then Miss Elizabeth s gives um, Ric, Ric Flair her sh high heel shoe knocks out Randy Savage with it. Randy Savage is out for the count, and Ric Flair be becomes WCW World Champion again. It was his 14th time winning the world title, and Miss Elizabeth turns on Randy Savage and joins the Nature Boy Ric Flair. Woo! And woman, 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 won't you marry me? And then this feel gets intense and stuff. They have promos that Miss Elizabeth says she hated Randy and then she started spending his money and stuff and Ric Flair and women were throwing the money out and it got so personal. Randy Savage a couple of times were barred from the building and stuff and they had house shows all across WCW which drew record numbers which was awesome and stuff. And Ric Flair and Randy Savage wrestled several times on Night Troll and Saturday Night, double disqualification and stuff. And the feud continued on. They had Hogan and Savage against the Alliance to end Hulkamania at like Uncensored 1996 with Ric Flair on Anderson, Lex Luger, the Dungeon of Doom. It was awful. And and this field continued. And then Slamboree 1996 
Ric Flair, and Randy Macho Man Savage were tag team partners. It was the Lethal Lottery. They faced off against Arn Anderson and Eddie Guerrero. I like, I cheat, I steal. Savage and Flair won that match, but they were hardly a tag team. They did not coexist. And they advanced, and then Miss Elizabeth slapped Randy Savage in the face. This gets more personal. They advance to the second round of Battle Brawl. They face off against the Public Enemy. And Public Enemy beats Savage and Flair. And then this continuous field continues on for a little while. Randy Savage continues to be barred from the building and stuff. But this feud did not really have a payoff on WCW Chit Television because this is around the time where the NWO started, so that the Flair Savage feud did not have a significant blow off or conclusion, which was so so disappointing because Flair and Savage feud was very very great, intense, especially getting like um, Miss Elizabeth involved, turning her heel and stuff. I thought eventually this would be a payoff where you know Randy would probably send. Um, Miss Elizabeth as a spy on Ric Flair and Woman, and eventually she turns on F Flair and Woman to go back to Randy, and they have a happy ending, but that did not happen and stuff, which was, I was a little disappointed, but the NWL was the biggest money maker in WCW history. The WWE feud was all good and stuff. It, it was good, but it got, got kind of real stale after a while and stuff. And the first half of the WCW feud, why did they get involved to have Randy Savage's father, Angelo Poffo, involved in this feud? I never know. That was a, you know, bonehead move by WCW. What was the next thing? They had Leaping Lanny Poffo feud with Ric Flair. That would have been worse. And that's about it on that. Be back with the third and final video blog of the night, which will be about former NHL player... Tim Kerr, keep calm everybody, I'm a Julie but a guy, Molly Rosenblatt of WCCO, um, Channel 4 in Minneapolis, St. Paul Rocks, and she's got nice legs, Elizabeth Tart, so, so stunning, and she's the best, and get Barbara Gibbs of ABC 11 has a sweet southern accent, and she has nice legs, and ABC Swansea, so awesome, and in the words of Charlotte Jack, get out, bye now.